Good morning, girls. Happy Thursday. Such a beautiful day out here in the Carolinas. A little bit of clouds out there, but we had a big storm come through last night. Now we've got wind and just beautiful day. Um, going to be about 60, so great day to be out there. Makes it hard to work and hang out inside. I was going to try to move morning minutes outside, but it was, I think the breeze is a little too chilly. Um, plus with the winds, yelp yell you'd probably hear was whoosh during the whole conversation. So today we're going to talk about focus and what your focus is on and how, because I know so many of us say, you know, we want to be focused on what God wants, but we're so distracted. And we've talked about distractions a little bit before, and a lot of them come in the form of our electronics, our phones, our iPads, our uh, Kindles, whatever it may be. It could be the TVs distracting you. So all the electronics could be a distraction. There could be just, if you're like me, your mind is constantly going, and it's really easy to get distracted. I don't know about you. There's things that I start, and then squirrel, I'm over and, and looking at what else I can work on. So when it comes to stuff, and like with the house, you know, I have to be really focused and pick one room at a time, because otherwise I'm all over the place. So how do we keep our focus on God? Because I know the question I've heard it so many times is how can I keep my mind focused on God when I have so many distractions? I start each day saying, I've got this. I'm going to stay close to Christ. But then I get so caught up in my work. I get caught up in my life. I get caught up in other people's drama. That you hardly give God a thought the rest of the day. And we know, girls, that we're not supposed to do that. We know that God should be at the forefront of everything we do. You know, that First Thessalonians 5.17 tells us to pray constantly, continually. Now, that doesn't mean, and that's actually the verse that our pastor picked for today's um, verse on the 40 days of prayer. Uh, but it not, does not mean... And you have to get on your knees, close your eyes, bow your head, fold your hands. Because, see, there's a lot of times that we're praying to God just as we're moving through our day. Maybe you're out walking. Or maybe you're sitting, sitting somewhere. I mean, goodness, sitting in the bathroom. I don't know. Um, and it's a time you can talk to God. The times that we connect to God are the times we're undistracted or not distracted. <clears throat> times that we can actually shut off all the noise around us and just listen to God. And it's hard. It really is hard. I get that. I get that you're busy. I'm busy. I get that we're distracted. Oh, Lordy, do I get that one? I can be sitting there focused and working and all of a sudden, oh, what about? And next thing I know, I'm wandering over here somewhere. So I get that. But it's a conscious effort. Because see, what's important to remember? That when we forget to focus on God, He never forgets us. Oh, someday, girls, I hope that we can be like Him. That we can be so focused, so laser focused, that we're not distracted. But I don't think that's going to happen until we're in heaven with Him. And we're at his feet. So while we're here, we just have to do the best we can to remind ourselves every day to focus on God. And see what we do know is putting our focus on God is a desire and a passion of our heart. Okay? We know that, right? We want to be closer to God. But what we have to do in order to get there we have to create a daily habit. Now we know there's good habits and bad. We get that. And what happens is it takes about 21 days to form a good habit. Consistently doing it. No excuses. No whining. We just do it. But you know what's really amazing? It takes three days to break the habit. 
What does that mean? That means that we really have to be aware. We have to be in tune with what's going on. We have to figure out how am I budgeting my time? How am I spending my time? What am I doing with my time? These are all questions we need to be asking ourselves daily. And I get that you're busy. Don't, don't think that I don't understand that. Because there's times that I get up and I get going and it feels like I've been launched out of a rocket. I've got clients that are needing, there's emergencies, they've got their fires going on. It seems that on those days that all the fires are happening, the dogs are doing something or they're sick or something's wrong. Or my husband maybe is having a bad day. Maybe I don't feel good. I've injured myself again somehow. Because see, what we do know is when all that chaos starts, if we don't stop it, it just gets worse and it compounds each day. So God wants us to walk with him every moment of the day. Be aware. And I think that's part of what happens with distraction. We get so distracted in everything we're doing that we're unaware we're doing it. And I'm guilty of that. Ask Greg. He'll tell you. I get so distracted and so caught up in what's going on that I lose track of time. That I end up at 8 o'clock at night saying, oh crap, I didn't get dinner done. What that requires is me to really be aware and be present where I'm at. To be conscious of the time, not to stare at the clock, but to be aware. And that's what we need to start doing with our walk with Christ. Just being aware of the distractions. And see if you start your day saying, God, show me the distractions in my life. Make me aware of them so that we can start to tune them down and what's amazing girls is he will show you all of a sudden it's going to be so evident what that distraction was that's what we need to be looking at are we seeking him to say show me my distractions why is my mind focused on everything else why am I caught up in the craziness in this world. Why am I not spending time with God? We just have to be aware of it. Because if we're aware of it, we can make the changes we need. We have to own it. You know, we're in a society today that nobody owns their issues. It's always everybody else's fault. You know, I totally see people saying, well, I don't have time for God because my family's so demanding. Oh, I don't have time for God because my job is so demanding. It's everybody else's fault, guys. I don't have time for God because of what happened in my past. Well, ladies, seriously, you are in charge of what you do every day. Yes, you may have a boss. Yes, you may have things that you have to get done. But you have to keep your mind focused on Christ. Own it. Ask him to show you your distractions. And then be willing to make the changes you need. Because see, God can show us all day long what the distractions are that's stopping us from spending that quality time with him. But we have to make that choice to change it. See, because God could say to you, or say to me, well, use me, Robin, you're spending too much time on your phone. Okay, thanks, God. Gotcha. And then go back to the phone. That's our nature. That's what we do. Instead of saying, when God says, Robin, you spend too much time on your phone, saying, okay, I'm aware of that now. Let me put this down. I challenged our girls in our study this last week, for this week, that they have to put down electronics 30 minutes before bedtime. And some aren't sure they can do it. 
I've challenged other people the same thing, and they're like, that's impossible to do. It's not. It really is not. I challenged my husband to it because he's worse than I am. I really could care less after a certain time because it's like, if y'all need me and it's an emergency, you'll call the house. And if it's not, it'll be dealt with tomorrow. But my husband gets so, because it's his way of relieving stress. When his job is driving him nuts, he tends to um, play. He's got a car racing game, I think, on his phone. And he'll tend to plug into that. And I tell him, you know, 30 minutes before bed, we need to shut the electronics off. And he fights me tooth and nail. But on the nights that he doesn't shut it off, he tosses and turns all night long. Because, see, we've got to take that downtime. And we've got to focus in the right place. But ask God to reveal to you your distractions. What is stopping you from keeping your mind focused on God and what he would want you to do. Isaiah 43, 4, chapter 43, verse 4. The Bible says, you are precious and honored in my sight, and I love you. We just need to be reminded, girls. Jesus loves us unconditionally. No matter how many excuses we find to not spend time with him, he still loves us. We need to develop good habits in our life completely. We need to develop them spiritually, mentally, and physically. Because in order for us to thrive as women of God, we've got to be balanced in all three areas. But if we're constantly distracted by the stuff, we cannot fall into balance. Some people say, how is it that you hear from God? Well, because I stop and listen. But I have to choose to stop and listen. See, I don't have to. Nothing says I have to stop and listen. But if I'm going to thrive as a woman of God spiritually, I must stop and listen. I must seek God. And obviously, I try to do it in the morning, you know, before we get together. But also at night, once we get, we're down into bed and the lights are off, that's another time that I close out my day just talking to God. And sometimes I fall asleep talking to Him, and I wake up in the morning going, did we finish our conversation? Because I don't know. Because there was so much peace in just having that conversation, having that time with God that I just went to sleep. Ask God also to remind you of his love for you. You see, not just at church, but everywhere and every day. Because we need to be reminded. And he shows you in small ways. But if our mind isn't focused on him, we can't see it. So this all goes back to... Being aware of what is distracting us and changing our focus. What are you focusing on each day when you get up? What are you focusing on throughout the day? Is God, how much of God are you really focused on throughout the day? And what are your distractions? So ask God today to reveal to you the distractions that are keeping you from him. And you probably already know them. Most of us do. We just have to make that choice to actually take action and remove them. Because see, most of the time, we just don't want to make the change. So today's challenge is determine what your distractions are and draw closer to God. Asking him to help you stay focused. If you start feeling scatterbrained, and if you start feeling like there's so much noise in your head, 
That's when you stop and ask God, clear my mind, Lord. Let me have some peace right now. Let me focus on you. Let me press into you. And he will do that. Because our verse for today is Isaiah 43, 4. And the Bible says in there, You are precious and honored in my sight, and I love you. Oh, girls, God loves you so much. He wants you to be focused on him and not be distracted by the world. So I hope today that you will ask God to reveal your distractions and help you focus back on him. And I'll be praying for you that you will be able to create a habit that is pleasing to God and allows you to receive the abundant blessings that are there for you when we pay attention. All right? What are your distractions? Have a great day. We'll catch you tomorrow.